Suzanne, I hope you are able to see the uh, slide that I have to share. Yes. Um, okay, cool. Uh, so this presentation is uh, uh, jointly prepared with uh, my colleagues, uh, Dr. Nahina Islam and Dr. Bokani from, we are from School of Engineering and Technology. Um, based in, we are based in different campuses. Nahina is in Melbourne, myself and Ayub is in uh, Sydney. So we are uh, from different places. So you can imagine when I talk about this uh, topic, how it, is, it can be a challenging task to uh, collaboratively produce uh, scholarly writing when you are far from each other. Um, so this topic uh, is actually about sharing our experience or practice rather on how we do collaborative scholarly writing. The synchronous keyword is an added requirement in our day-to-day um, uh, -day, uh, scholarly writing um, activities that I have put in there. So we'll talk about that as well. I do acknowledge that um, what I'm gonna be, we are gonna be sharing is something uh, definitely the topic of collaborative writing, scholarly writing, synchronous collaboration and scholarly writing is a topic that uh, all of us uh, um, are familiar with. We have different practices on how we handle that or how we deal with that. We are just sharing our practice. And I think uh, there would be quite many of us in the room here who do exactly what I am gonna share. But you know, in a recent presentation by one of, uh, by Nahina actually, uh, on a, this similar topic to one of the groups uh, revealed to us that many of us were not al aware of this uh, particular tool and the strength and beauty of these wonderful tools, hence our motivation for today's talk to clear to the broader community of, uh, you know, our colleagues. So let me, uh, by the way, so this topic is about a particular tool, how we use it for our collaborative synchronous scholarly writing. It is called Overlay Flated. And I have developed this presentation using overlay related. Couldn't do any other way to justify, to do justice to the topic. So let me move on. So a quick overview of uh, what I'm gonna touch upon in my presentation. Okay, so um, words, scholarly writing collaborative writing, synchronous writing. So there are quite a few things uh, going on here, a few requirements, if you like. Um, so this picture here, I hope that uh, clearly shows what synchronous collaboration may look like. You know, we are all together um, working collaboratively at the same time. Uh, so it's more like a face-to-face um, -face, uh, in a room kind of setting. Um, so collaborations, as we all know, have great benefits for us. Um, it's great for generating new ideas, bringing in fresh ideas from participants. It's a great uh, social interactions uh, and actually collaborative writing, I would say, is a product of or a productive output of a collab social collab uh, a professional collaboration in a social setting uh, or uh, socialization professionally, right? Okay, interestingly, um, uh, around 85% of documents um, were at least, had or at least two authors that were produced in the university and um, office settings that was found uh, in a study by um, uh, reported authors in this reference here. Yeah. Um, so we all know that this is a big part of our work life uh, and study life, uh, group work and collaborations, and then bring, uh, producing that uh, output, right, in the form of um, scholarly writing. Um, so therefore, it is actually a core skill in our graduates, uh, and this is something we just can't avoid. Um, so there is this requirement at times when we are collaboratively writing that we need to have um, what we can have in this setting, you know, this uh, synchronous uh, editing, synchronous activity, synchronous exchange of ideas. So which is easier to achieve when we are physically together in the office meeting room, for example, in the graduate room. So we are sitting together, discussing ideas and writing together, editing based on real time feedback. So this is something that uh, the requirements of synchronous demands from uh, this activity rather. So um, 
Therefore, there is actually a demand for online tools that would mimic or that would give all these features that I have just mentioned here briefly. Uh, why online tools? Because we remember our spatiotemporal needs these days, that of the way we work, we want to work flexibly. X number of colleagues are coming from Y number of time zones. So we do need online tools that would also mimic, that would mimic us this setting, really, when we are talking about collaborative uh, scholarly writing. Exactly. But the tool that I'm going to be sharing, which we, uh, we use for our scholarly writing, is a tool that doesn't necessarily have to be used for synchronous writing. It can be used asynchronously too. But that synchronous feature is a stringent requirement that not many tools do support. Hence, I put it there. So, um, there has been a push for uh, the online uh, collaborative tools. Uh, forget about writing for a moment, just collaboration. So Microsoft Teams, uh, Zoom, we are on Zoom now and so on. So there have been a lot of tools and um, there have been a lot of tools that are have been developed and people are using those tools for collaborative writing too. So some of the requirements that uh, such writing, collaborative writing online tools have to really fulfill is about real time problem solving in a team so the tool has to support that it has to have ability for that multi user feedback on the same working document maybe even at the same time real time and quick fact, fact checking when uh, the team is editing the document and synchronous co editing so these are some of the stringent requirements on collaborative uh, online tools for collaborative writing that uh, NICOP et al um, have, you know, um, uh, developed or uh, found that we need that uh, from those tools. So some examples of the collaborative writing tools, I have listed them here. Google Docs, we are all familiar with. Um, this is for doc document production. NB for annotation, that's the collaborative annotation tool. Padlet is there for bulletin board collaboratively, uh, you know, uh, this can be used in a uh, unit, for example, as a bulletin board to be used by teachers and students alike. And there is Overleaf, which is a document production system uh, or um, uh, uh, environment rather using LaTeX. Okay, so many of us use LaTeX forever, but this may be a new term. So I have just, you know, um, mentioned here how we pronounce it. It's LaTeX not latex invariably almost all new grad students will say latex and it gives me a rubbery feeling hmm. <laughs> so important so this is a, sorry this is a document preparation system for high quality typesetting so latex itself could have a you know tutorial so my point today is not talking about what latex is but it's important to give a fundamental idea about it so you know how in HTML, when we produce web pages, we have uh, typesetting, like we have markup tags, right? LaTeX also has that. So it's, it's a typesetting, really, for producing high quality documents. Um, so moving on to um, uh, over, Overleaf LaTeX, which is accessed through this website. Uh, this uh, particular online tool has been around um, about, since about last eight years, but I mean, since last five years or so, it has become so feature rich that I wouldn't use anything else for collaborative writing purposes. Um, it's easy to use online, collaborative, logic editor. Some logic editors have been there forever. Um, traditionally, people use LaTeX on Unix machines. Then there were packages that were available for, um, you know, uh, Windows computers and so on. But you would have to install those packages, manage all this stuff. But with Overleaf LaTeX, there is no need for installing any packages or anything. Everything is there. It's just so easy for everybody to use. So just looking at some stats, um, currently there are about 6 million users from universities um, and organizations, about 3,600 3, institutions worldwide use the services of Overleaf. Some of the features that um, are very appealing, uh, these features actually combine both good features from LaTeX that were not there before, now there is, such as no installation of packages needed, that's the LaTeX related stuff. 
um, which also continues with like templates for any type of document. Imagine you are uh, gonna write your thesis, uh, uh, Roxana, you are going to do that. So CQ template, it could be fit into LaTeX. So almost all journals, all conferences have templates that we can just load on LaTeX. So I, we don't have to manually format anything. Imagine just changing the place of the, the figure or a picture on a XYZ produced document and you want to move it and oh, I don't want to get into that. So it's, it just makes our lives easier, you know? So idea objective here is that we want to make our lives easier while the job is done perfectly. That's a very hard requirement, easy and perfect, right? LaTeX over, with Overleaf will give us that. So, um, so thesis conferences and everything for producing high quality end products, we, we use Le overview uh, overleaf LaTeX. Um, adding references and citing is just a piece of cake because we don't have to manually add just anything, those numberings for referencing, um, or even uh, you know how they appear, the styling of it. Just keep adding in a big tech file by any of the members in the team, whoever comes up with a new reference, just keep adding and you just cite by citing using the cite command or tag and everything else is done automatically. So readjustments are not manual at all. Everything is automatic. Um, so auto adjustment of layouts using commands um, like markup kind of tags. Now main features that make overview LaTeX to us the most appealing one for collaborative synchronous writing is that it gives a chat box for real time discussions while many of us are on the same project you know, modifying and editing, we can do quick fact checks. Then we have review comments option that we can write away, fix, and address. Or someone can, someone in the group can come later, look at it, resolve, and do the resolving button pass, and it's done there. Asynchronous co-editing. That's what we do before the deadline, even before submitting the abstracts to this conference. We used, of course, Overleaf for writing it, and we were at the last moment. I, myself, and Nahina would be on Overleaf and fixing it uh, things and talking to each other. So that's like you know, it's just such a vibrant uh, environment to work with, and not to mention the end product is high quality when you are submitting to a journal when you are submitting your thesis or conferences we reviewers know when we look at the paper we know what it is made with you know so it creates an impression very important um so synchronous co-editing and high quality final products so just taking you to my last slide um uh, to show how we use it different people use it differently you know it's a tool how we use it so to start with, would we'll create a project. So we use it with colleagues and students. When I say students, I'm, we might we use it for our research students for writing their um, proposal for their COC document, paper writing and thesis writing. So you know how you have to continually give feedback and so on. And it's a transparent process. You can see what the student is has done or what kind of reply they have provided to your query and so on. So we create a project which you can see in this image on the first image. So this is these are our project files. So actually this is from this particular conference that we submitted our abstracts to. So that's the project I'm showing you here. Um, so we have a ref.bib. So this is the bibliography file where we'll be keeping on adding uh, uh, references as we come across and as we need to use. So create the project then share the link with your colleagues who would be you know using this project and co-editing with you so keep co-creating co-editing contents then leave the process uh, leave and process review comments you know how we review each other's writing right because we are together writing this so we have to do that uh, provide feedback so it's there it's on the same document and then discuss and chat while co-editing so that will be a bit more clear when we come to this uh, bottom diagram. So I have, uh, this is our input file. Interestingly, LaTeX is not what you see is what you get. This is not that kind of production system uh, as opposed to, for example, Microsoft Word. When we are typing what we see, typing and how it is looking is almost how the end product will be. This is not. There is a compilation process involved. So 
if you look in the top part picture, this is how the input file is in the middle one. But this is how the output file is. There is a compile button, but um, for overlay, the compilation happens automatically. So we don't have to worry about it. We can instantly view it. So that's why I was saying that as opposed to how LaTeX was many years ago, using overlay for LaTeX is, uh, makes it simpler and very appealing, easy to use. I'm gonna finish now. So That's just good. to show You've you. You've got one and, one and a half minutes left. You're all I'll good. be fine with that. <laughs> um, so there is this review part, as you can see, and I left uh, some comment here that better to have the abstract in one column rather than spreading across two, for example. So my colleague would come and see it, rectify. They would uh, press the, um, uh, what is, uh, um, there is a button. So you have dealt with that. Then there is a chat. So I was, I think, chatting with Nahina saying that, yes, I think so. You have done that part. I will try to do this, whatever. So we were chatting in the real time. But if she wasn't there, she would come back and look at the chat too. So everything is just here. Um, so that, that's what makes it so useful for us. You know, uh, we wouldn't use anything else anyway for pro producing high quality uh, scholarly articles. But this presentation by no means if I may stop share, and I'm gonna show you just one more thing by a new share. Um, okay, so can you see this screen now? This is where you would go. So just, uh, it shows uh, the benefits of it very nicely, maybe better than I have. And I am gonna actually finish off with this cartoon. Are you able to see this? This presentation by no means was a comparison with any other document processing or word processor. LaTeX is not a word processor. It's a document processing system. I'm just showing you how passionate LaTeX users are. I think you can tell by now. <laughs> uh, so, so which is better, LaTeX or Word? Well, no, we don't say that. We say, depends on your objective. You know, what you are trying to produce. Over there, you can't have an absolute. There is always a but or what is. So LaTeX users are very one-sided. Um, so this guy, LaTeX user saying, look at definitely. Uh, there are so many reasons, too many to fit in this bubble. Everyone should use it and word should don't exist. And the word user is saying, what LaTeX? <laughs> I'm not judging that, but I thought that was really humorous. Um, idea was uh, to um, share how we can even uh, do our supervision, our HD supervision. I wouldn't be looking at my students' documents in any other format. This is synchronous, so I can leave comments. I can see what they have done. Um, it's just perfect for collaborative uh, scholarly writing, and synchronization is a feature that Overleaf has given to LaTeX. So with that, I'll finish my. Uh, presentation and uh, I'll let you ask any questions if you have. My colleague is also here, so Nahina can also answer. So thank you so much, okay. um, Jahan. I, I must say that as you were giving your presentation, I was thinking if you ever decided to change careers, you would be snapped up by the um, producers to, <laughs> to um, promote it because you, you, um, you clearly love it and um, therefore inspire the rest of us to give it a go. Um, a couple Thank of questions. <laughs> a couple of questions came through, and um, one of them was, "How well does it articulate with, you know, word documents and so on?" And also, how does it work with things like EndNote? Okay. Okay. Cool. You wouldn't be using EndNote. EndNote works with uh, Word, um, mm -hmm. my, um, processor, Microsoft Word. But with LaTeX, we have a bibliography file in which we just keep in entering um, bib and bibliography and uh, entries. So it has a bibtex system. And EndNote is for um, Microsoft Word. Bibtex is the file where Nahina, do you want to just add in something, please, from your experience? Yeah. Sure, thank you, Jahan, for the beautiful presentation. And um, before answering to that, I would say I'm a huge fan of LaTeX and with Overleaf, 
um, trust me, they can hire us too. <laughs> and they can hire all the latest users to promote for that because it's an amazing tool. It's a life changer. And the best part is the referencing with BibTeX. So BibTeX is the alternative name of EndNode in Latex. And what all you need to do when, when you're doing collaboratively uh, writing something, it is a big issue that how the referencing style would be... You, when we don't use latex, I mean that uh, how the, uh, it is a big thing to think about how the uh, how consistent referencing styles are and what are the orders of referencing. However, when you write in latex, you don't have to think about it because in latex there's just one line that defines that in the uh, use the referencing style as per say example Harvard style. So when, and then there is a file called BibTeX. You drag all the um, Beep text notation, which you can find easily on Google Scholar or as such uh, databases. You drag them, put it in your file, save it. And then inside your main text, you can just cite and put the first name of the first author or however you have um, referenced it. And that then Latex would take care about the referencing style, the order of the references and how you have cited in inside it that in-text citation would also be taken care of latex. So while you're writing, you don't have to think about um, referencing the style, the citation order or template. That's why I call it a magical tool that you just focus on your writing, they would take care of rest of it. Um, and also we did a, a tutorial as well, and it was an amazing result that there were so many uh, academics who were really interested to know about it. And they emailed me later that it is indeed a life-changing uh, tool. Excellent. Thank you um, so much to, to both of you. Um, I think anything that can make our life simpler, especially those of us um, who are either writing a thesis or supervising those who are. So uh, excellent, ladies. That was really interesting. Um, there's one or two more questions that are in the chat box, but I do need to keep our session moving. 